Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Our program today commemorates an important piece of our region's history. When American and British forces squared off in the War of 1812, one of the major points of contention was the right of the United States to carry on trade without interference from the British Navy. Lake Champlain was not immune from the war. It was on the lake in 1814 that an American naval force won a decisive victory against a British fleet. To this day, it's known as the Battle of Plattsburgh. This month marks the 202nd anniversary of the Battle of Plattsburgh, and next week a series of commemorative events and activities will be held throughout the city. To find out more, I'm joined by two guests. Don Wickman is a respected regional historian and the director of the Kent DeLord House Museum in Plattsburgh, and Sandra Geddes is the city's promotions and special events coordinator. Thanks so much for coming in. Always Thank a pleasure. Now, Don, before we start talking about the anniversary itself, let's set the stage for us. Why is the Battle of Plattsburgh so important? Well, the war breaks out in 1812, and by the time 1814 rolls around, it's pretty much a stalemate on the uh, New York uh, border with Canada and the Great Lakes. But in 1814, things change because the British are now defeated Napoleon in Europe, and they have a surplus of trained troops. And they decide to start putting the emphasis on this what they were first judging a minor conflict in North America. And they send troops over and they had a multitude of strategies they were going to do mainly as a diversion, attack Washington and Baltimore, but the emphasis was going to be on Plattsburgh. And it's because Lake Champlain is such a vital waterway. If you control the waterway, you control the entire valley and then they could come down, if they had naval control, all the way to Albany. And that's what they wanted, um, almost like what General Burgoyne failed to do in the American Revolution. So here we are in early September 1814. The British have 10,000 trained troops at the Canadian border. The Americans have less than 4,000. Most of them they had just shipped out to go west, holding Plattsburgh. And miraculously, I don't want to take too much away mm -hmm. from the commemoration, um, victory is achieved by the Americans. Uh, and part of it all goes back to what happened on the naval battle. Um, and it's very much sometimes hidden in the shadows because of Washington burning and the rocket's red glare in the national anthem at Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And so, Sandra, what's happening in Plattsburgh and when? Well, the Battle of Plattsburgh commemoration this year is September 8th through the 11th, and um, we're really excited about a robust and um, lively schedule of events packed um, from the 8th through the 11th. Uh, it begins Thursday with a few memorial services that are really important things to commemorate during this uh, weekend of events. The first is uh, Culver Hill, and then we'll have Halsey Corner Memorial um, Ceremonies, and then at 5 o'clock is the Riverside Cemetery Memorial, where we recognize those lost on both sides of the battle. Um, following that, we go and we start to party a little bit, yeah. and we go to the Strand Center for the Arts, uh, the Strand Theater, to see Bear Tracks, which is a really, really popular group um, that performs at the Strand that evening. Mm -hmm. They're and, a must see. <laughs> a must -see. <laughs> and after the concert, done, then what happens? Okay. Things start getting into the commemoration uh, mode and more entertainment is at the Kent Lord House, our grounds turns into a large encampment. We're figuring 175 reenactors this year. And the cool part about it is that on September 6, 1814, um, the British actually occupied the house and grounds. They built artillery. So we lower the American flag and put the British flag up there through until Sunday. But it's a wonderful opportunity for people to uh, see how reenactors handle living history. The house is open for, for tours the entire weekend. There's sutlers, which are like market, um, um, this is people that are selling their wares also present, but we just welcome people to um, come and see the house, walk through the same threshold that British officers were. And so, Sandra, there's also a block party, too? Oh, yes. Well, uh, Friday night really is when, you know, when everybody gets out of work is when really things start to amp up. The reenactors are walking down the street. We have live music uh, at 6 p.m. and then again at 7.30 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. we have the duo, which is a local group that's really fun. And then Wild Nights, a band, is coming to us from Brattleboro, Vermont. But then we have also have uh, musical performances, including Roy Hurd and several others in the Israel Green Tavern that's being put on by Conroy Organics that 
evening. Um, and then, of course, we have our fantastic uh, fireworks that really kicked the weekend off. We're really excited about those. We amped it up a little bit this year, thanks to Eagles Nest Veterinary Hospital, who sponsors it every single year. And so then, Don, Saturday's a pretty busy day. What's happening at the Kent Award House Saturday? The encampment is ongoing yep. um, and will be open 10 to 4, but also at the same time, uh, for the third year now, we're incorporating a great program for youth uh, called the Junior Encampment. And that's an experience where we call it children of all ages can come and learn hands-on trades and crafts from the 19th century. Why is that so important, do you think? I don't think we get, um, I think it brings people back in time to find out that uh, we are beyond cell phones, electronics. If you want to make butter, you just don't go to the supermarket and buy a pound. Google you can actually make it right, <laughs> exactly. Um, you can make your own candles, learn how to do some of these things, and just get the touch of what it was like 200 years ago and actually relate to what it was like back then before we have all these modern amenities and supermarkets. And, and I think it's the best way to learn history is actually hands-on history. And tell us a little bit, too, about how the Kent DeLorde House itself fits into this. Okay. Uh, well, we're the base, mm -hmm. and also when they go through the house, they'll actually be able to see um, artifacts and furniture and learn stories right from 1812. And so, Sandra, what else is happening on Saturday the 10th? Um, well, there's concerts, as I said, everywhere. We have music going on. We have a reenactment taking over, uh, taking place over on the base, which is actually a brand new reenactment. Um, we ha people will be able to see a working scale model of Commodore McDonough's flagship, the Saratoga. We have the uh, bateau race. I mean, things are going on all over. The pipes and drums vans will be doing static performances all over. It's a lively, lively day. And sounds good. For people who need more information, there's a website, too. Yeah, go to uh, cityofplattsburgh-ny.gov or simply type cityofplattsburgh.com and you'll uh, look for Battle of Plattsburgh commemoration. We've got the menu for the tavern. We've got all the live musical performances, where to buy your button, all of the good things. And now this is the part of the program where I feel underdressed. <laughs> Joining us now is Charlie Mitchell. And as you can see, Charlie is dressed a little differently than the rest of us. Charlie, explain your clothing, if you would. Okay, I portray a member of the New York State Militia, 36th Regiment, Manley's Company. And so tell me a little bit about um, your uh, career as a reenactor. Okay, uh, I've been in reenacting uh, close to 10 years, and uh, growing up in Plattsburgh, I've always enjoyed the history, and uh, I guess it was just meant to be. And you're a teacher, correct? I am, yes. Uh, 32 years as a high school earth science teacher in Peru, New York. Terrific. Now tell me a little bit about the clothing itself. Okay. Well, uh, the New York Militia was a well-uniformed uh, and equipped uh, group from the state of New York. And so this, this is the regimental coat that they wore. And uh, the, the hat, which is so, somewhat of a fashion statement with the, uh, the bear. Uh, I was going to say, say, that's yeah, quite, yeah, quite yeah. something. Right. And, and then also the, the white plume. Uh, would identify uh, infantry unit mm -hmm. as opposed to red for artillery and maybe green for riflemen. And so what's your role in the commemoration? Okay, well, uh, our reenactment group that I'm a member of, we portray uh, U.S. regulars, we portray the New York militia. Both of, the, both of those groups of people were very, very important in Battle of Plattsburgh. And so we, we uh, organize the reenactment we and we help to carry it out. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the reenactment this year. Okay well we have uh, two new uh, reenactments taking place this year. Uh, the first will be Saturday morning over on the old base, uh, the Oval, and that is going to be a battle that recreates what happened on the morning of September 6th uh, where members of the New York militia and U.S. regulars went out to meet the British near Beekmantown and tried to slow down their advance. And throughout the morning, retreated back to Culver Hill, Halsey's Corners, and eventually back into downtown Plattsburgh by the bridge. So what you're going to see on the Oval is the British pushing the Americans. And uh, eventually to a point where the, ar the Americans will bring up artillery and fire upon the British uh, and so on. Now this sounds like it takes a lot of coordination to pull this off. It, it does. <laughs> there, uh, there, it, it has, it will, and uh, there's a lot of planning. And, and um, you know, in the morning, uh, officers call, uh, instructions, will be, instructions will be given out, and people will uh, be told what to do and so on. 
So that's Saturday. So Saturday recreates uh, early in the morning on the 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday morning recreates what happened closer to noontime, where uh, the, the regulars and militia actually tore up the bridge. And so what you're going to see are the Americans pushed through downtown Plattsburgh, across the bridge, the bridge being torn up, and uh, a group of, of younger uh, volunteers, uh, Aikens volunteers, who are well known uh, keeping the British at bay. How many people are you talking about as far as reenactors? Well, when all is told, when, when you uh, have the British and, and the, uh, all of the boat crews and the Americans, we, we could be up to a couple of hundred. And now, are these people who come from all over? All over uh, Ontario, Quebec, Vermont, Massachusetts, uh, all over New York State, yes. Why do you think it's important to have this living history, if you will? Battle of Plattsburgh, to me, is something that's been kind of forgotten. Actually, the, the whole uh, War of 1812 seems to be kind of a forgotten war. And uh, Plattsburgh is often left out when, when the history of the War of 1812 is given. And this is the largest invasion of the United States. And more than 10,000 British troops came right down through here. And, uh, you know, it was the, the battle, the naval battle, and the, the, the victory on the lake that changed all of that. That and then led to uh, uh, later uh, the, the treaty being negotiated and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so, Sandra, have we missed anything else that's happening on the, the Saturday the 10th? Well, yes, our parade. <laughs> we have a fantastic parade. Um, really excited for this year. We have four pipes and drums bands. We have the Norwich University marching band coming. Uh, the Straw Hatters marching band will be coming this year. And of course, Her Majesty's Royal Marine Corps band, who then um, following the uh, parade, which we expect about 80 different entries from different groups in our region. Um, after that, we have the Beat Retreat, which is a compilation of all of the different musical groups that perform in front of City Hall. I had the first chance to see this myself last year, sadly, as I was coordinating the event. And it just, it's, it's goosebumps you get. It's amazing. It's a wonderful uh, performance that they do, and that's immediately following the parade, so around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really a sight to see in here. Yes. And so four days of events um, is not inexpensive. Is there a cost? Yes, so there, when people um, want to go into any venue, they simply have to purchase a $15, that's it, $15, you get a pin, and that's basically your VIP pass for the entire weekend for all four days. You can get into any venue. Um, of course, we are able to put this event on uh, because we have such wonderful sponsors in our community. Um, I won't list them all, but I would love to because without them, we wouldn't be able to have this amazing event. But you can get your button, that gets you into any conference concert, uh, the tavern, any venue, and you'll also be helping us uh, to put the event on for years to come. And so where can people learn more about the schedule of events? They can go to www.cityofplattsburgh.com, check out our website. The schedule is there, as I said, and also the tavern line, musical lineup, um, where you can get your buttons, and um, soon we'll have a merchandise um, link for fo folks to get on to so you can get your Battle of Plattsburgh baseball hats or t-shirts, whatever you like. So Charlie, we've got a um, couple minutes left. I was wondering if you could maybe speak a little bit about what it's like to be a reenactor. Where do the outfits come from? Sure. Um, a little bit about the authenticity. Okay. Well, one of the things that I strive for, many members of my unit strive for, is to be authentic. And so we, we do a lot of research. Uh, this, an, an actual original New York militia coat was on display over at the Museum of Pot Sam, New York. And we had a member go over and actually look at it. And uh, then we come back and we, we find the patterns. We, we find as close as we can to the wool, and we, we sew these on our own. They're all it, handmade. They're all handmade, right. All, every one of these gold buttonholes, was, I hand sewed. So That's I had to learn how to do it first and then uh, do it. That's terrific. Um, and so I want to thank you both for coming in. And also want to thank Don Wickman of the uh, Kent DeLord House Museum, who was with us a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. A final reminder, if you need information about the Battle of Plattsburgh or how to participate or how to um, be there, uh, you can check out the reenactments and check out the website. It's the cityofplattsburgh-ny.gov. All the information that you need about the Battle of Plattsburgh commemoration and all the events over the several days that this is taking place. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. That's, that's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.